Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. It's lovely to have you with me and today I'm going to continue with Inktober Tangles 2022 and I'm going to do three more days today. I know it's the 5th of October as I record this um, but if I do them in chunks of three I think that will keep me happily pottering along towards the end of the month as and when I get to them. So with no further ado let me just zoom into this like so let me add there we go autofocus is always a good thing and then the first tangle that oh the tangle that is for day four is one that is called souk s-o-u-k and this is by steph key well i can't see kifaba the names on there Yeah, I will put the name in the in the link, but um, this is souk. So I'm going to want to have my souk, I think, in a in a ribbon kind of form. And I think I'll want it coming out. Actually, let's pop it up here because it will be a nice way to have a bit of a contrast with the um, rain from day one which is this one here is rain. This is Del Y and this one is I see you. Okay, choose a pen. 05 I think is what I was using. And this is an interesting pattern because it starts with shapes like this. So I'm doing little Humps, a bit like you would do for a wave or it's like connected ends or M's or upside down U's or whatever. And this is where it gets interesting because for the next row we're going to do the, do the M's in this way but we're going to start somewhere above these and I'm going to put little dots in so I'm going to go up through the vertical up to a decent height above because that way you'll see we'll create some little triangle shapes, uh, not triangles, they're four sided, they're squares. So I'm going to go down and up, down and up, down and up, down, up. And I think I've made mine a little bit too high really, but that also may be a function of the fact that I'm bending this around. So I've got a series of shapes like this, these little rice shapes or leaf shapes, joined by these diamonds that have got curvy insides. Now there is another way of drawing this that I'll do very quickly with you. Then the next step is to draw from the corner of one like this so we create a bigger leaf on one side and then we're going to do the same thing but we're going to alternate them along this chain so sometimes it's easier to do all the ones in one direction together so i'll miss that one and then i'll do that one this one's going to be interesting because it's going to go right behind the rain but i'm fine with that then, that's interesting as it is, but to make it more interesting, now I think in um, Steph's original pattern, how do they do, how does she do that? Oh, I see what she's done. Yeah, okay. We're going to aura these, and the way we aura this is we start here. So if you, if you watch, I'll check I'm on camera as well, because I've got too many windows open today for this. I was a bit off there, sorry. Okay, now I'm, now I'm back here, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to start at this corner here and I'm going to go up and down as if I'm pointing into that corner and then I'm going to puff out 
And do we join at the top? I think we do, like so. Okay. And then from the other side, we're going to do the same thing. So I could go down this way, but I think I prefer to do the little bit first as it gives me something to aim for from the long stroke. So let's keep going. So if I do this one here, we're doing the same thing where we're going up and down and then out and up. And from this side down and up. For the bottom ones, same kind of idea. Let me do this on one of them. I'm going to start at the corner here and I'm going to go out like that and then up like that. Then on the other side, here's the triangle, this triangle, the diamond I'm going from. So here's the corner I'm going from. And because I've got such a little one there, I'm going to exaggerate that curve out and back like that. Same here, in, out. And here I'm going to have to imagine where these would be and I'm going to let it spill out as well. The one I've got left to do, I've got one left to do, which is this one here. So this side is easy enough because I've got that triangle to launch off. But here I can imagine that the triangle is here and just add this together. Okay. Right then, finishing bits. I'm going to put a black diamond inside each of these diamonds, squares. Find them first. This would be a nice thing to do to be if you're um, at the start of, right, and here I need to do that bit that goes in. I'm going to come back to these in a moment. I could leave these as, as they are, but I could do this thing called, oh, look, here, I need to do the same kind of idea there. And then that completes, yeah, that completes everything. In Zentangle, they call it coffering, don't they? Where you join points together. And I think I'll quite like to do this because it will add some shape or connection between sections. So, I don't have one here, but I have one here, 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 here. And there'd be one going over here somewhere, but I'm going to leave that as it is. So I'm starting to add some structure to this. I'll leave this one on the end as it is for the moment. I'm going to come back with that. Okay, and the next thing I think I'd like to do, this is me, is I've got these lovely sections here and I'm going to fill them in in a way that is reminiscent of this one which is the ICU. So I'm using the ICUs to fill these little gaps in. So I'll start with lots of these ones. Oops, filled that one in an awful lot. I'm just going to turn this, make sure I've got it all on my camera because I'm zoomed in. And then I am going to put some of the patterns in the middle in. I think I'll start with a dark area in the middle and order it. So I've got such a little space here and I'm using a fairly thick pen. So I am using a um, an 05 here. So that looks nice as it is, but I still want to add some more things here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put circles in the middle here. I'm going to keep it simple. And 
and join the top of the diamond to the top of the um, the rest of this pattern to the point like that. I think that'll work quite nicely. I also want to, I think I want to, I will get a finer pen for this. I've got an O3 here. I think I'm going to just add an extra aura here. A thin one. Hopefully you can see where. Like so. And I'm also going to add a really thin aura around these inner parts. The ICUs as well. getting very fine. I could have done with drawing this in a much bigger scale but we're okay. And I think I'm going to call that one kind of done. But I did say I'd show you another way that my brain was working on this one. And so I think, how am I going to do this? So I could put one there but perhaps I'll put one on the other side of the rain. And it is raining out. So while I'm just putting my pencil line in and starting to set this up, I'd just like to say thank you if you've subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, please do. If you enjoy what I'm drawing and how I'm doing these things, um, please give a thumbs up and um, click the bell if you want notifications for when I post videos. I am a bit sporadic at the moment. I'll explain that when I'm chatting in a moment. So another way of doing this is I'm going to put my diamonds in where I want them and the size I'd like them. You can do this as evenly or as unevenly as you wish. I'm also going to put the corner of one just there and I'm going to have a very short one there. And then these are joined by, actually let me just pop that little black diamond in the middle before I do anything else because it helps me to focus on things and make sense of things. And then here is where we're going to join them with leaf shapes. And this means that you've got a lot more control about how much, or how big you make these. I'm not going to add one on the end here, I'll come back to that. And I quite like this because I can decide where the end of this was. If I'd thought ahead, I could have popped that one right on the end there. But I will i think I know what I want to do there. I'm going to do something like this little embellishment here. So we've got those. So the next one is to... I've already forgotten what the next step is. Oh yeah, it's to draw... See, on top of those, it's on top of the diamonds, isn't it? Duh. I'm going to draw this, this kind of shape on alternate diamonds pointing upwards, then on ultimate, alternate diamonds pointing downwards. Going be oh, look at that. I've okay, we're putting them on everyone now. because I really wasn't paying attention to what I was doing there, was I? So we'll just go with it. It's a variation, an unexpected variation, but it's still a variation. And then here, I think I'm going to... pop a little bit of a leaf in. So that's, that's Souk in a different kind of way. And I think I will. I'm going to aura this one all around, not joining it at the top. Because I forgot to do that. Join it there. But then I'm going to add the coffering at the bottom and at the top. So essentially I'm joining it towards the top. 
just in a slightly different way. So that's, that actually makes it quite, very much like a tile, doesn't it? Okay, so let's do the same thing here. And of course you could aura this as often as you like. But I quite like it because I like these gaps I've got in between it now to add other things to. Oh, that was, an, that was a funny one because I had um, not a lot of space there to put the aura in. But I'm just going to go back and I'm going to add these lines in to separate out, or to create sections within that aura as well. And I also think I'm going to use that finer pen of mine. Move the O1 out of the way because I'll find it easier to switch back and forth between them. I think I'm going to do a thin aura inside of these. Like so. Tiny one there. Another one there and there. Here and here. And that means I'm also going to need to do auras inside these ones. They look like they belong. It's like a chain of flowers, isn't it? So it might not have ended up exactly the same as the original as the souk there, but I just wanted to show you another way of drawing souk. And I've got um, the one thing I do want to do to both of these of starting souk off with the chain of diamonds rather than the um, ups and downs. Say so there are, I often say this, there are many ways of arriving at the same um, destination when it comes to patterns and entangles, I think. Sometimes some things just make more sense to you. Whichever way works for you is the right way. It's the end result that matters, not necessarily the process that you get to it. Well, not even not necessarily. The process you get to where to your end result is the only thing that really matters. And I'm going to add, just moving my pen round, as so I've put some um, black, I've thickened the lines on the bottom. I want to add thicker lines to the left as well. Like so. And I'm going to do that on this little leaf I've drawn here. But I'm going to add some line weight on these inside bits to the top and to the right. So it looks like they've got hollow space inside. I'm now thinking, am I going to have enough space on this paper to do all 31 days? <gasps> this rate? Probably not, but that's okay because I've got the back side of it to use. And I also want to do some weight on these diamonds just to pick them up. So I'm doing it on the bottom, two bottom sides. I'm looking at them this way because this is the right way up. So there we have, and if I zoom out, hopefully, we've got two versions of souk on here. I don't know that I want to add, it. well, I'm going to have to add some line weight somewhere to these, I think. But I really have drawn these ones just that little bit too small, I think. But... I also think it'll work out fine in the end. So to these ones I'm going to just add some line weight to the left. There's plenty of ink at the bottom edge here because I've added all of that detail in. 
but I think that'll be fine. So there we are. So that's Souk, which is um, by Steph Keith Harbour. So that's day four. Day five is Molly Gone. Molly Gone is a pattern that I've never really had a lot of luck with. But I'm going to try today and I'm going to use this as the place where I start my Molly Gons. So again, I'll zoom in. And Molly Gone is by Zentangle. And I think it was Molly Robert, Norley, no, Molly Hollyboy, isn't it? Who came up with this one. And um, you're sort of drawing shapes that are a bit like orange segments. So I'm going to start with, or crescent moons. So I'm going to start with a curve that goes around this, that almost cups it, if you like. And then I'm going to draw another curve around it. Then I'm going to start up here and I'm going to draw my next line. But I'm not going to bring it all the way back around here. I'm going to stop short and then I'm going to draw the other one in. And what this will do is this will make this kind of spiral out in its own kind of way. You've got some control over this, but not necessarily as much control as you think you have. I think if you get to understand the pattern, you'll have a lot of control over it. But I'm going to add mine. Yeah, so they sort of fade away underneath my label here. Those are my, that's my molly gone, my basic molly gons, but I am going to join them together. And to do that, I'm going to start just a little bit way in from the point, I think. And I'm draw a little curve in just to connect them together. And the same on the other side. We get this really strange looking kind of, almost like dishes put together in a way, or a weird kind of pipe. I'm so tempted to actually join them to this as well. If I'd curved them outwards, they really would have looked a lot more like dishes, so that's always possible. Do I want to add? I don't know, I don't know whether I will. I think I'll leave it like that for now. But then we've got all these lovely shapes inside to do something with. And I am going to add, this is an upside down V almost. So I'm going to start somewhere along the middle of this. It doesn't matter whether you're exactly middle or not, roughly middle. And then on either side, I've created two little rice shapes. And I really like, I really like the way that this works. So I'm going to do the same here on each one. The bigger you draw your mollygons, the more space you'll have in that middle bit to add things. And I am going to add things. Now, what you can do is to weave here or I could add um, one of my favourite tangles that I've used a lot at the moment is Betweed. But I think I'll weave this instead and I'll use my finer pen. So I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to aura on that side. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to aura there. And alternate them back and forth. So I'll st always start on the left side. Aura the right left, right, left. And you get this kind of weaving pattern going on. So I'll do the same here. Left, right, left, right, left. Left, right, left, 
right. Bigger space there so I could fit more of those in. And I love the way that these lines, where they come together, it automatically creates a bit more ink in that center, central bit. And it almost looks already like it creates a kind of dip there. Okay, so I've got those, but I also have something going on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add an aura in here, a very fine one. And then, underneath that, I'm going to add Perk in. Like so, so they're squashed in really well. I'm going to try and get the last one to sort of join up with where I've put that um, edge of the connection here. By filling this bit in, it really does help to bring out that connection and join them together and separate it from the background then as well. beginning to think I shouldn't have put any white charcoal on here because I'm just going to rub it off with my hands as I'm going. This isn't the only pattern you could use. Any kind of pattern that would fill there would work. It would just depend on the distance you leave between your mollygons. The bigger the distance you leave the more options there are for you. I've messed up here. I should have put a fine aura in here before doing this, but I think it'll be fine. It just it just makes that all belong together. Which, excuse me a moment, I've got tea. Yesterday was a really funny day for me. I, um, I went well. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. I just was not very well. And, um, I I got lost in some art and oh I had an errand to run as well and um, it, the day went by and I didn't get a lot done and in the evening I really wasn't too good. I don't know what don't know what it was. I had an upset stomach and I was just so tired. I was the same the day before, so so tired, and I don't know how or why. But, you know, um, okay today. I feel okay today. I feel better today. I wouldn't say I was 100% today, but I do feel better. But um, we'll see how the day goes. So, the next pattern for day six is one called, a, a, it's called Heart, Heartfelt. Heartfully, sorry. And this is an interesting pattern again. And I can see a couple of ways of getting to the same place. But we'll have a look at this. And it's a grid pattern, so I want to draw a grid here. And I think I may have one. Actually, let's have one that kind of flows out from... I'm definitely not going to get 31 tangles on one page, am I? I've just realised this, <laughs> that flows out from underneath here. And can you see I've made the top narrower than the bottom and I've curved these lines as well. I'm doing them in pencil. So I'm going to roughly, it doesn't have to be precise, divide this in three and I'm going to create that grid. This is curving this away, so I'll want these to curve this away as well. So I've got a three by three grid to start with and I will need to ink that in. 
I will. And I'm going to ink that in with my thicker pen here. The pencil just make sure I can place this exactly where I would like it before I do anything else. But the pencil lines are only guides. I don't know if you can see, I've already missed some of them. And of course with pencil I can erase that before I do anything else. Like add colour. Okay, so this is Heartfully. And there's couple of ways that this is by Helen Willem, Williams and there seems to be a couple of ways that she's done to oh I see what she's done she's done two versions of it one is where you put the hearts in yeah I can see what she's doing I think I can see what she's done in another place okay it's called heartfully because you do put hearts in to these sections. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to draw diagonal lines in both directions through my grid here. Because I know when I tried drawing this, because I have I have sort of played with these. I did start a, um, one of these a little while ago, you know, I don't know, the weekend. And I did this and I thought, I tried to put in a circle in the middle to get the hearts to, because I had trouble, I had trouble getting the hearts down in a way that was organised. So let's try this. And I then think what I'll do is in the middle of this, I'm just going to pop square a square. doesn't matter what the size of the square is, but I just think this will help me. Now, you don't have to do this because the next step you can do without any kind of structure. It's just that I feel I'm a bit of a mare when it comes to things like this. So I'm going to start by drawing a heart in one corner. So let me zoom in as well for you on this. Okay. And I'm using the corner of this square here as a way of getting my heart sorted in, put in. So I've drawn one di diagonally opposite. It doesn't matter what order you draw them in. And mine here are likely to overlap because I've most probably created square that's a bit too big but I'm fine with that I don't mind the overlappingness so you end up with four hearts kind of coming together towards the middle of your each square so let's have a look again so one there I'll do one on the other side I'm turning my paper so I can easily get to Here. we've got four coming together now they didn't overlap I think it's because I wasn't making them quite as plump as I started doing them I did have some fairly plump hearts to begin with just realised I haven't done any line weight on the mollygons I think you can just draw the hearts so they come together that way. Yeah, I think the um, this this square is just helping me remember to leave some space. And also, I'm learning that I usually draw hearts that are quite plumpish. And here we need them small enough that they will connect together. Now I've got a tiny gap there, so I'm going to fill that in with black. And I'm also going to fill this here with black and this one as well just to help separate the mollygon from this that's all 
So let's have a look. So I'll want another heart there. There's one going there. There. And so on. Part of me is thinking, oh, it's such a shame that I didn't do this on white paper because I could have chosen different coloured different colours to add to this, but hey ho. It is what it is. As I often say, and you work with what you're doing and I'm not going to judge this or overly think about it or beat myself up about it until I finished it because it's only partly done I suspect it I'll most probably get this page complete about halfway through Inktober we'll see so um but this comes together really quite nicely doesn't it it's a nice interesting pattern because you get the hearts create different two different kinds of flowers really. So you've got flowers that are created at the corners where the grid meets and then you've got a different kind of flower here where you've got a kind of centre between them. Of course how you How you fill that centre and what you do with these, well, the world is your oyster. I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do before I do anything else, is I'm going to put an aura right there around, right the way around this section. So it looks a bit like a carpet flapping out from underneath something. So that's quite nice. And I like I've left some space at the bottom as well. OK, how can we finish this off? Well, what I'm going to do... Oh, and I'm using my thicker pen, it seems. I'm going to aura these little spaces... on the outsides of the hearts and grid and bring out the shapes where they where the squares meet, where the tiles of this pattern meet. So we're getting that lovely curved kind of triangle on each side here. Now if if like me you've got wonky shapes you just fit it in as it will fit you don't worry about having a perfect mirror image because it will be fine in the grand scheme of things nobody will really notice well they'll notice there's something a bit different here here i'm just going to fill this bit in with black Okay, I've got this one to do, this one, that one there, that one there. I think I've got them all. Just start, sit back for a moment, have a quick look. Then I do need to do something with these central bits. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to squash an all bin. I'm going to fill in around it. And then I'll probably squash another one in the middle and create a little black bead there. So you don't need to have this all perfect. We're going to make use of the little sections of the hearts and just... Fill, because we're filling them in with black, it helps to bring out the heart shape, I suppose. And of course we can make little adjustments as we go there as well, just to 
help things look just right. So that makes quite a nice difference. And I'm glad I'm putting this outer part in before I add the, oh look, I missed one there. If I put the bead in the middle, or the seed, or black gem, I've seen them called, black pearls in the middle. I often think of them as spooky eyes. But then I have a natural inclination towards things Halloweeny and cute and whimsical. But a lot of flowers have shapes like this in the centre of them. My mind is thinking of Forget Me Not and Bird's Eye Speedwell. Which is some well, Forget Me Nots are grown in gardens, but they do grow wild here in the UK. But Bird's Eye Speedwell, I think it is. It's definitely um, a wildflower. It's lovely and blue and it's got this lovely centre that's yellow and white. And it does look like a, an eye in the middle of it. I've got no idea why it's called... Is it Bird's Foot Trefoil? Bird's Foot Speedwell? Oh, no idea why. But it's ever so pretty. Tiny flowers. I mean, not microscopically tiny, but, you know, compared to something like a rose, they're minuscule. But they're pretty. And the blue is lovely. It's a lovely sky blue, cerulean blue. OK, so there's Heartfully, which is, as I say, is by Helen Williams. So I've added three today. I've added Souk these two here and Souk is by Steph um, Kif Harbour. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Molygon here which is lovely and actually that's I'm warming to Molygon especially as I've worked out I can join them together and Heartfully here. All fun, all great to do and I'm not going to add colour and shading here because my video is already quite a bit long. It's over 40 minutes long. But um, I'll post a picture of it when it's finished with that shading and colour. And if you particularly want me to go through how I did one, if you can't work it out, just bear in mind, I'm very simple in my approach to colour and shading. I tend to add shadow. One colour I tend to use. And, oh, I've just noticed what I haven't done. Left this one without its eye. It's a blind flower. Can't have that. There we go. Um, very simple. So perhaps I will just do a bit here. Okay, let me have a look. What colour's that? Okay, this'll do. I have got I'm going to use ink tents instead of the um markers I used the other day. And I've just realised I was um pointing at things where you wouldn't know what I was pointing at because I'm still zoomed in. <sighs> okay, I'm just getting rid of my pencil lines for the new tangles I've done. If you don't want pencil lines underneath artwork or colour. Okay, so I'm going to start with my Molygon. Not Molygon. Heartfully here. I'm going to add where I want my colour to be darkest, which is top and bottom of each of these hearts. Actually, the hooker's green may be a different colour green to what I've used, but it's still green. That is the point. So I'm staying with greens. I might move into bluey greens, actually. I've got a lovely green aquamarine that would actually go beautifully here. And would add a lovely contrast. So I'm keeping the colour towards the bottom and top mostly. I'm filling the space in between with a little bit of colour, but I'm trying to keep the darkest colour where I think the petals would curl over perhaps. So you imagine them curling up and over this way. That's what I'm doing. So with this one, I think I'd make a, also make a pattern out of the colour I'm adding. 
And so I'll add some more Hooker's Green here, just very quickly. Of course, my problem is now I've got to remember what I'm doing. So as much as I like the Karin water um, pro markers, the, they've got water soluble dye ink in them. They are a bit of a pain to work with in some ways. And um, I have to go because my delivery is... Right, that's that then. That's all my my um, goodies from Abel and Cole put away, which is fab. So, um, it's Wednesday, you see, as I record this. It's Wednesday the 5th, I think it is. Yeah, 5th of October. And as it'll be uploaded as well, so... But just in case you don't watch it on Wednesday the 5th of October 2022, which is a Wednesday. I do get a weekly um, order of organic food delivered. It's not, not a huge amount, but there's things like milk and, and stuff like that that needs to go in the fridge and um, other stuff as well. So I like to get it put away as quickly as I can, even though we're in the cooler months. And as it's raining outside, it's not good to have cardboard boxes, even if they are covered with a plastic bag left out in the rain. This is a much brighter green than the ones at the top. Um, so I am doing, adding colour to this one in a kind of checkerboard pattern. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Dear goodness. <coughs> oh, I don't know what's caused that. Something has got up my nose. So, um, yeah, so it's a bit wet out today, to say the least. I'm not sure if we've still got warnings here for um, high winds. But, uh, I know we did yesterday. I think it was for today, but I could be wrong. <laughs> so, um, so it's very wet out, so I think I'll be home most of the day. As I have to venture to a, a supermarket grocery store. Because there are things I can't get on Abel and Cole that I may need. Not that I'm desperate for it, but far from it. Right, excuse me a moment, I'm going to stop the video a moment. While I... Right, hopefully that will be my nose behaving. Can't guarantee it. Now, the colour I did say I'd like to use here was this green aquamarine, which I think will kind of go with some of the others. I'm not going to do all of these. Just enough for you to get the idea and how lovely is it is more of a bluey green but it's still on the green spectrum so I'm happy for that and this is um, what I'm using here is a zig water brush so it it's working at the moment with just the right amount of water coming out of the um, brush automatically it's got a tank at the top that has water in it and you can squeeze it from time to time just to dampen, to let a little bit more water through to the reservoir if it starts to run dry. Or um, if you need more water because you're covering a larger area. Or you prefer more water to come out, choice is yours. But I find them really convenient. And rather than rattling at a, um, a water tank, or a water tank, a jar of water all the time. Um, I much prefer to use these. I'm not too sure about that um, hooker's green that I've put down. Um, but this is the beauty of colour, is that you can add to it. You don't have to stick with the one. I'm learning a lot about glazing and layering colours at the moment with a project I've got on the go. Um, it's sort of William Morris inspired still because I'm into, I think I've always been into the arts and crafts movement without realising it. Um, close to where I live, a few miles away, 
is a beautiful little fairy tale castle built in Victorian times called Castell Coch, which means the red castle, and it's made from red sandstone. And the architect who designed it was a chap called William Burgess, who was one of the arts and, craft mo arts and crafts movement and was part of the company that um, William Morris founded with others, I think. I seem to remember this. And of course, this, this fairy tale castle, it was built on the foundations of an existing castle, a very small castle. And he drew inspiration from the medieval walled town of Carcassonne in the south of France and other similar kinds of structures. So you've got these wonderful towers that have got the pointy roofs on, which never really existed in castles of medieval times. And you've got this Victorian almost um, nostalgic fantasy look back at medieval times as, you know, sort of like a, a, an icon, iconic time of design and pattern and so on getting now where I got a lot of my influence from, what influences me. I think everybody who's watched me for a while knows how much I love illuminated manuscripts, medieval art, medieval, early medieval architecture, as well as some prehistoric stuff and goodness knows what. And arts and crafts is a natural segue from that. And um, I grew up, I, I didn't grow up in Castellcourt, but I grew up with many, many Sundays um, Sunday afternoons spent exploring the castle, the grounds, and I loved it in the castle. I would just sit in rooms and just look at them because the decoration in there is so arts and crafts, William morris -y, but it's different. And um, I'll, I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description to Castellcourt for you so you can have a look at why it engaged me so much. And all of this is just beginning to trickle back out now and haven't been there for years. Right. So I, this centre green is just a bit uh, kind of green for me. So I am looking for a different colour. I did see one that I wanted to use. Of course, naturally, I've pulled out six million. Well, not quite. That is an exaggeration, a total exaggeration. It's not own. Where is it? Green aquamarine. I got it out. I can't find it for looking. Oh, there we are iron green because I can and this is why I love ink tense pencils for this because you can go over the top of them with another colour and the bottom one won't shift so where once it's dried so where the colours are light will still have lightness remaining so I prefer that actually very much so. I prefer that darker green. The other one, it fits in better with what I've already done. Now, of course, I'm going to add highlights with um, souffle pen in keeping with the rest or white gel pen as well. I don't think I'm going to use the um, charcoal though. It's, it's just wearing off. I'll do just one and more of these very quickly with the iron green just to get an idea, or perhaps a couple of them, because they don't take long. And the lovely thing about using um, these is that because I'm activating them with water, I really don't have to be all that careful about how I apply the colour. It's just about getting the densest colour roughly in the places where I want the darkest colour. And just starting at the edge and pulling colour out into the lightest area just to lighten that up and then I work in the opposite direction to push the, the wet colour into the areas where I want it to be darkest. Perhaps I might need to just blend it out in the middle just that little bit more but that's my whole premise on working with these. I'm not saying this is the right way to do this but it's my way. It's how it works for me. And before I do any more here, use that one. You can put this down on wet paper and you will get a huge amount of colour coming off the tip of the pencil. And as long as the paper is quite wet, 
you can continue to work with it but as soon as it dries or starts to dry you're not going to shift the colour very much so it dries permanently and you can dip these in water and use them to draw and colour with that way and it puts an awful lot of colour down very vibrant colour which is great if that's how you want to work with colour or if you're looking for a particular effect with them I'm tending to work more in a watercolour way but with an intensity of colour you don't necessarily get with watercolours you can but I haven't worked out how to be bold enough for them yet I much prefer that colour, that's working for me Yeah. so I'll finish that off um, in between I'm likely to add quite dark colours here and here I may add some black lines on top just to darken it but I'm going to stick to um, greens have I got any dark green here the iron green is most probably the darkest colour I've got but I'll do that with the dark colour in there and then lighter colours round might use some gold metallic or white there okay with the mollygons let me just move my pencils out the way I've got a number of different greens I've got a beach green here and I'm going to put this on the edges of these points of these rice shapes top and bottom I think so where these are overlapped by the um, my panel my title panel here I'm just I'm guessing where I'd have some of this colour I may venture into the realms of um, blues and purples on this grey green paper at some point as well which could add some interest I might do that actually on the um, heartfully part I was just working on but I just really want to do enough here to give you an idea of how I'd approach this which doesn't necessarily say it's the way you have to approach it With these, I quite like that contrast of the detail where I've done the weaving in the centre and the um, plainness of the outer bits. Though it would be easy to add more pattern to these and I may, once they dry, I may come back in and add some details with pens, coloured pens or black pen. Not entirely sure yet. But instantly this just starts to bring dimension as soon as you start adding water and getting those darker tips in and just that hint of colour in the centre suddenly there is all this lovely um, dimension going on and you get that natural kind of highlight there which you can intensify with the use of like chalk pastel or anything else but I just think it just looks fab almost straight away okay right the souks now they're going to be a bit of a challenge because they're quite different each of them oh, for this one I may use some blue or purple on these beads and I'll certainly add, use a darker colour in this central bit just to bring that out but I'm not sure what colour I want to use I know that was beach I used there don't want to use the same colour there I think I might go with the iron green and I'm just going to put a band of colour down the centre there where the weaving starts or you know where these um, not the weaving starts where the those little sections overlap and then I'm just going to keep it really dark in the middle and just pull it a little bit of colour out to fade it towards the edge as if we're getting a bit of a highlight towards the edge I'm just wiping my pen my brush off every now and again when I've got too much colour on it because I do want that kind of fading to one side to happen if it doesn't work out if there's not enough colour here I can always add more once it's dry that's not an issue I quite like the idea of having this as a kind of fold inside 
me pop that on the other side so I'm not always working, walk, moving across the screen. It's not my natural side to put this on. So that's that's beginning to add a lot of... That works. Actually, I quite like that. Okay, to the souk and whatever else we've got here. The souk is just the one that's left. Okay, again, let me have a look. I have got here an olive colour. And I'm going to add olive at the base of these, I think. On either side of the diamond, in each of these cases, I'm putting a fair amount of olive down there. And although it doesn't look a nice colour, once it's activated, it brings... I love the way this happens with ink tents, is the colours really come to life. They're very dull until you add water. With water, they will look a lot more vibrant until they dry. But I'm quite happy with that. I like the variation here. This is more of a khaki colour. And of course, these colours are combining with the grey-green of the paper as well. If you're not into using colours, you can do this with graphite. It's the same idea. Where I'm keeping my colour the densest is where the shadows or the darkest part would be. So it's your choice. That, see, I automatically went across to the left there. It's absolutely your choice as to how you add colour to these or shading. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to leave that very fine um, aura as it is for the moment. So I do think I might want to put white in there and that's going to be a challenge. Got myself all fuffled around. I'm going to put olive in these ones as well on the outside bit. It's a challenge because there's not a lot of space there and I haven't sharpened my pencil. But with these I may be happy with a fair amount of colour in these. Um, they are like an ICU. ICU. Not ICU as in the hospital. But I see you. As in I'm able to view you. I can see you over there. But the C is spelled S-C-A like the ocean. Like the sea. I haven't been to the sea for a while. And I've got no excuses, really, because it's not that far away for me. Um, it's about 40 minute drive max. And that's not fast roads, by the way. That's quite... I um... wonder what colour this one is. It's Ionian green. So let's have a look at this one, because this one will be a bit different. I think it... it's a duller green. So I am putting this at the at the edge of these diamonds, away that's away from the point of these. And I think that will work quite nicely. Actually, that works nicely as a colour. It's not dissimilar to this one here. Go. And I'll think about what I do. I think I'll use that, actually on the spaces in between here. The smaller these get, the more I'm just going to add colour to them and not worry too much about where I'm adding shadow and highlight because it's getting to the point of ridiculousness. And I think you, you get to a point where you just have to make those kinds of decisions. So here, I'm trying to keep the dark to the edge and leave a little highlight. But again, like with these little sections, I know I can't, they're too small for me to try to get any detail into them. I'd have to use a much finer brush than I've got. So just having them nice and dark like this will work for me. And I'm just going to put a dot of colour in these circles here. I'm using the Ionian green, hopefully. I didn't check, that was the one I picked up. Just enough, just to give a bit of colour there. And, um, but I'm likely to put a, a white spot there. So there we're beginning to get 
plenty of um, interest going. So now I've got these to do here. This is going to be the interesting thing. I'm going to use the green aquamarine again because I love this bluey, bluey green. Inside these, I'm going to pop where I've thickened my lines, the colour, because that's where I'll want it to be darkest. So I'm putting a nice line of colour under each of these. And inside those, and then I'm just going to activate that and fade it down towards the bottom layer or the opposite layer. And I don't know if you notice, I'm moving my brush kind of in the same direction as these these lines are, so that as I'm moving, I'm not I'm naturally blending this together and getting same kind of shape as the area I'm in, kind of. So I'm starting by moving it in the same direction but then I'm having to change the back and forth to match the curve of the other side of these shapes. And that then just adds that shadow underneath there quite nicely. There. So that's beginning to add that depth there. Um, around the outsides I'm going to add the, I'm going to use the green aquamarine here as well where I'm going to add the darkest colour in these sections here to begin with on either side of this coffering. I think I'm going to have to do the same at the top for consistency. So just up here, just a bit on either side of the top line and then we'll keep the brighter area in between the two. It's a little bit there where it overlaps Always bear in mind where things overlap, you're going to want more shadow. So, again, it's just starting on the edge, blending it out, going to the other one that's darker and then allowing that to activate. Blending back and forth until you get a nice gradient of colour. Here, I'm just going to create basically one colour, because the, shape, the, the space is very small. Here. There we go. That I shouldn't have done because that one is oh, right. I can see what I need to do here. Put quite a lot there. Here I've made a mistake, but um, I'll work on that later on. This one I'm pulling some of that colour back into this section because that's where I need it darkest. So I put a fair amount of the ink tents down. And here I've missed this one. So if I could always do a mental kind of check as I go through them, I think right, I've missed that one there. Let's let's stop and do add some more colour before I start painting, as it were. lovely thing about this really is almost an instant it's that instant dimension it adds but as I've said already if you prefer to use just graphite or that's all that you have you know an ordinary drawing pencil then do that it's your choice entirely and it's your choice whether you follow what I'm doing or not. Just showing you how I do things and hopefully sharing how I think about things and what I particularly like. Oh, now then, 
can get a bit in the corner there it's a bit damp but that's fine because it's the darkest area so that is I really like that I also like what color I liked the beach green so I'm looking for that one for a moment there it is because I think that beach green which is the molygon would look nice in the centers here and I'm also going to add some to this little leaf I put in at the top there just to finish this off I just need a little bit in here so by beach green I'm just going to pick a bit of colour up off the point of the pencil and I can add a little bit more to these just to darken the bottom half because with these I don't mind having a distinct section of dark and light so it will help with a sense of um, dimension. Now I may as well just have a look. Need my pencil case so I might as well get a, my souffle pen out and do some souffleing while I'm at it. Let's see if I can find a souffle pen. Of course I can't. I've got a white glaze which isn't what I want. Was it in here? Yes, there it is. Hurrah! Hurrah for souffle pens is all I'm going to say. Okay, I've got a scrap piece of paper here. So with soufflés, you really do need to clean the tip each time you use them and to get the ink, ink rolling. So with these, I'm going to put dots here for highlights. Now, I'm not going to do all of these because I haven't completed these but I am going to pop dots down the center of these hearts like that which help which will help to bring out the diagonals as well which I think will work nicely with the molygons I do want to put some highlights in but I think I want to intensify this colour a bit more before I do that. On the souk here I'm going to pop a bead of the white in those ones and I think I might pop white in the centre of the dark spaces in the little almost like I see use and I think I might try to put the tiniest dot of white in the center of the diamonds there again when that dries that will help to lift those up i've got one more here oops let me move that out the way that i've added the color to i want here so i'll just add some of these you see that as they start to dry these go clear and colorless But when they dry again, they dry very white and very opaque. And um, with these ones, I want to intensify some of the shadows here. But I know with souffle pens that once they dry, they are waterproof, that they won't shift. The colour might stick to them a bit, but I'm not too worried about that. With this one, I'm just going to put white dots here, right in the centre of the black. And I think I might pop white dots right at the point of this area here on the outside not sure about the inside yet but I just think I want some white there just so it all ties in together so although I haven't finished this one yet oops 
as I zoom in even further it's a morning there we go even though I haven't finished this one down here or this one completely I am thinking about white ink here possibly gold may use some gold some metallics um, I'm not sure but the way that they're beginning to look the one thing I haven't done and I'm going to do right at the end is to tackle the areas in between I want to see what this will look like when I've I completed the whole page and decide how I add shadow whether I'm going to add patterns in pens that are a slightly darker shade than the background because that could be quite nice um, but I really want to get all of this done so I can see what the spaces are. I've got little spaces around here and I think I might put some black cross hatching in there or some cross hatching with something else. I don't know yet. So for now I'm going to say thank you for joining me. This is going to be a heck of a long video again. I hope you stuck through to the end. If you have, thank you very much. And can you see how bright and white these have become? Possibly too brightly white, but they are what they are and I'm staying consistent. And I actually quite like the pops of brightness. It's grey outside, it's wet. It's not very bright today. And when there's not a lot of sunshine around, my mood, mood can plummet. And I think that's been part of my problem for a couple of days. So um, sunlight therapy lamp needs to be dug out and used is all I'm going to say. So until I see you again, take care, look after yourselves and create sunshine in your life through your art. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye all.